Hello again. Now, coalition governments continue to be a headache. It seems that every few months the coalition leaders face votes of no confidence. Well, we've just heard from Pule Lituti Jones about what's going on in Ekuruleni, and earlier we heard from Letiwe Mluli about what's happening in Eteguini. Now, this has left many municipalities ungovernable and focusing on inner politics instead of delivering much needed services to the ratepayers and the residents of these various municipalities. Let's discuss this now with Michael Evans, a public law attorney at Weber Wenzel. He's been doing local government legal work since 1994 and he's joining me now. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Michael, and thank you very much uh, uh, for your time and joining us here. I've seen a couple of um, opinion pieces you've written, not just uh, uh, recently in 21 and in 2020, where you are very strong about the need, for example, for a complete restructure of, of, of local government. And you also speak uh, about uh, the challenges that the coalitions are presenting with us. What should change? Thanks, Dan. Yes, I, mean, I wrote a lot about that um, just after the local government elections in 2021. Um, and I suggested that municipalities should shift from the, the current, which most of them have, executive mayoral system to a collective executive system. And I said that would be particularly important in uh, municipalities where you have coalition governments. Now, in a sense, looking at it a year later or just over a year later, I think those views for me have been, have been reinforced. Um, if I use Johannesburg is an example. Um, it's probably a good example. I mean, we've got coalition governments in place in the entire Gauteng, in Chwani, in Kuraleni, and in Johannesburg. Um, and in Johannesburg, in the space of just over a year, we've had four uh, mayors. You know, we've had um, Paul Palazzi, and then we had uh, Dada Marera of the ANC, and then Paul Palazzi again, and now we've got Tapelo Ahmad of the Al Jamaa party. And for me, it's an absolutely ludicrous situation that you can have a party like Al Jamaa, which has only which only received, according to Business Day, 9,000 votes in an area of 6 million people in the last election, and they now have the executive mayor of Johannesburg. And an executive mayor is an incredibly powerful position. In some ways, at a local government level, the executive mayor has more power than the premier has at provincial level or even the state president has at national level. And this is now in the hands of a of, of party that obtained, I think, three seats in Johannesburg and received about 9,000 votes. And we've had this complete change of government over and over again, not only in Johannesburg, we've seen it in, in Nelson Mandela Bay as well, uh, in Kabecha, and in other places too. And I've always argued that this collective executive system is a, is a better system of government. It doesn't require legislative change at all because our local government legislation, the Municipal Structures Act, allows the premier of a province to shift from one system to another. And where you have a collective executive system, Dan, it's, it's, it has a mayor, yes, but the mayor has mainly a ceremonial function, uh, not an executive function. And the power lies in the hands of the executive committee. And the executive committee consists of three to 10 people, depending on the size of the municipality. And broadly speaking, the political parties are represented on a, on a proportional basis. So again, if I look at Johannesburg, if we had a collective executive system, the ANC would have four seats, the DA would have three seats, Action SA would have two seats, and the EFF would have one seat. And they would be forced to work together um, in order to, to govern that municipality. And it almost compels more cooperation between the political parties, mm. and that helps depoliticize municipalities to some extent. And it also means that you've got checks and balances in place because you've got different parties represented in the leadership. So it makes less possible that you're going to have corruption, um, irregular expenditure, uh, cadre deployment, and all the other things that have destroyed the municipalities in our country. Yeah. Now, but obviously, it's not necessarily a perfect system, and you could have a situation in, let's say, again, let's use Johannesburg as an example, where the ANC aligns with the EFF and the DA aligns with the Action SA, and they split 5-5 and they can't reach agreement. That is a possibility, of course. But in that situation, then they go back to the council for a decision if they're reaching a deadlock. And I just feel that in, in, in Gauteng, for example, if the MEC for, for provincial government, responsible for provincial government, was really doing the job properly, they would consider a shift to collective executive 
for all three municipalities but, but, in the Gauteng Yeah, but, but it, seems like we, it seems like we're stuck in this proportional representation model in terms of, um, of, of the system, the electoral system, because the currently is that kind of a, of a party thing. W uh, uh, in terms of, um, of delivering services, if you had that kind of a setup, do you think it, it, it would assist? Well, there are some municipalities which have done that. Um, so Cape Town used to be on a collective executive basis. Um, it then shifted to, to executive mayoral. There have been municipalities in KwaZulu-Natal. And quite recently, we saw the Free State MEC, Mkulisi uh, Dukwana, um, talking about heading in that direction in, in parts of the, the Free State. Um, it's, it's not going to guarantee service delivery. I mean, you need a whole lot of things that are going to contribute to service delivery. But it does force a working relationship between the leadership parties because they all are collectively in the leadership. And every political party says top of their agenda is service delivery. Um, that's always the, the statement that is made by the political parties. Now they'll be in a situation where they have to work together to ensure service delivery because they'll all be responsible jointly. And it would hopefully force a more cooperative relationship between those parties within, within the leadership structure as opposed to a system where the ex executive mayor has um, very extensive powers. Um, you know, the mayoral committee is only plays an advisory role. Um, it doesn't play a decision-making role. It's the executive mayor who has, you know, the real authority when it comes to the executive mayoral system. I can so sometimes if, understand... Yeah, so, so, sorry, just no, on sorry. that. So, sorry, Michael, just sorry, on that. Yeah. So if, if that was not the case, the executive mayor position will have less kind of power in, in a collective system. Completely correct. Actually, no real power. Um, it's, a, it's a ceremonial position. So your executive mayor will go and you know, cut the ribbon at events and things like that and play a kind of ceremonial role, but has, um, has no real decision-making power because that, allows, that, that lies with the, the collective executive system. Uh, okay. Yeah, with the collective executive. Yeah, so that will take away the, the need to fight for an executive mayoral position, which is what we are seeing currently. I mean, my colleague Puleli yes. Jones has just come back from Ekuruleni. Tanya Campbell is facing, possibly facing another motion of no confidence. It's in the background, but the speaker is now been uh, ousted. There's an interim speaker, and the EFF and the ANC are deciding who gets the chief whip, who gets the what. So in this system that you are proposing, these kind of power plays will disappear. Well, they, the decisions would be made by the full council. So the council would need to elect a mayor, but there wouldn't be as much at stake because the mayor, as I say, would only play a ceremonial function. The council would then elect the executive committee, um, but the the proportions would be would be would be set by the council. It it broadly has to be on a pro rata basis, and as I say, in a council like Johannesburg, that would then be four, three, okay. two, one, ANC, D, Action, SA, EFF. Um, those smaller parties like Al Jamar and um, other smaller parties wouldn't be represented on the executive. And that would be completely correct because they haven't got the support to justify being represented on the executive. Okay, um, no, that makes sense. Um, that may, yeah, mm. I understand it now, but we'll have to wait and see if any of the people who've got the authority, as you say, like the people who are in charge of uh, corporate governance and local government, if they are able to do so. But in some parts of the country, mm. it's been done. Thank you very much for explaining to us, Michael Evans from Weber Wenzel, that coalitions are not the only ways of sharing power. That's the nub of what he's saying. We, we do have other mechanisms to improve the workings of our municipalities.